Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkowiak, and today we're going to talk for a second a little bit about pig gear and what I've changed uh, for pig hunts and things like that. This is public land, spot and stalk, pig hunting things. And I've been doing it quite a while now, killed a few pigs with it, and I've kind of dialed in exactly what I do and don't like, changed some things up, that kind of stuff. So we're going to cover it today. Um, and uh, break some things down for you. First of all, uh, you don't need much to do this, okay? You don't need a lot of gear. I mean, basically anything you're wearing, you don't even need camouflage. You could go out in what I'm wearing right now like this, small little compact backpack and a couple of accessories in it and some rubber boots and you're, you're good to go. That's all you need. Uh, there is no fancy anything required for it. Tags are usually cheap. It is a very fantastic way to spend some time in the off season, get some great exercise and enjoy yourself. So it's a win-win win all the way around but as you do it more and more you start to find that you want to fine-tune this don't want to carry that change this out um, so these are some of the things that I found that, that I'm I, that, that work best for me so first of all a backpack now originally if you watch some of my other videos I had a this same backpack that I was using First pig hunt I went on, I, I carried my big uh, Kuyu 2300 Venture uh, pack on, and I figured because that way I could put a pig in it if I needed to. I re quickly realized I didn't need it, and I didn't want to carry that much pack. You're walking too much, hiking too much, covering too much ground. My opinion, get yourself a very small little camelback or mountain bike style backpack. What I like about this one is it is vented. All of these, this is all vented through there. You can see the holes in there, but that is actually vented for airflow. You can see the big gap in the back of this with airflow through there. These are all vented. There's a lot of ventilation in this pack, so it's very comfortable in the warmer weather. Simple little camelback backpack, nothing fancy. That's a Mule LR um, is that particular one. I've done reviews on it, but any any of these backpacks will work. This They've been phenomenal, but just something small. You can put two or three water bottles in it. You can put some food in there. You can carry some accessories. Accessory-wise, I don't bring a lot of stuff, okay? About the same as I usually take on deer season, but with deer season, I also got haul lines um, with me for my ropes. I got bow hooks, you know, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I'm carrying flashlight, Eagle Tac, uh, you know, the, the same one I always use. I'll put links to the stuff below, but the Eagle Tac, uh, the, the D25 LC2 Clicky, 2 cell. I love this light, done reviews on it. Um, the Phoenix headlamp, this one here, this uh, is the H, is this the 50? Yeah, the H, HM50R, best headlamp I've ever used. Talked about it many times, have reviews on it. Again, links will be below for you. But I got a headlamp and a flashlight. I like having both. Um, and then honestly speaking, everywhere I go, I have another Eagle Tac, the single cell version of the D25 Clicky, in my pocket everywhere I go all the time. So I have technically three flashlights. Overkill, yes, but the headlamp is good. This one is definitely nice for really lighting things up when you're trying to uh, find that blood down there and things like that. It also comes in handy when you get turned around out there and you think you're going to take a shortcut and next thing you know you come to this big open expanse of water in the swamp and you don't know if you can get through it because you're wearing knee-high rubber boots this light here when you turn this thing on full blast and you crank this thing the power of this light will get out there and let you really see and you can see if there's high ground on the other side or if you got to go left or right comes in very handy I've, I've noticed for that when i've been stuck a few times in georgia so headlamp flashlight these are my tags i keep them in a ziploc bag um, because I do videos out there, I like having this little pod. I've done reviews on this too, but it wraps around trees, it stands on its own, hooks on anything, grabs my cell phone. Uh, again, reviews, all this stuff, done reviews on it, but that goes with me. I always carry duct tape with me all the time, comes in handy for so many uses, so I keep that with me. And then I have in my little compartment, the top part of this pack right here where it's real easy to get to, you can see right in here this little mesh pocket. Real easy to access, that's where I keep my flashlight, that duct tape, keep lighters, I have three lighters that go in here. But I also carry two AA batteries and a CR123 battery, roll of Tums, because I, I get heartburn, so it's nice to have. So those things are always right there easily accessed. That way I have a battery for my headlamp, this will work in my headlamp, or in my one that's right here, but I leave it out and loose in that pocket because if it dies, I can get to it really quick. Same with the two double A's. They are for my GPS. Yes, I use Onyx, but I also keep a GPS. Really, all I do with this is I mark my spot, and when I'm blood trailing, I still use this. I do not trust 
on X personally yet for the very fine-tuned detailing of grid searching. Now it is great for straight line grid search or straight line searches and blood trails and navigation, but I still trust this better to not cut corners and show me exactly where I walk. So mainly I'm using this as a backup in case I were to drop my phone in the swamp and lose it. I at least have this to get me back to where I need to be. Um, besides the compass, but I have that spot lo locked on here for the car, and then I also have it for if I have to go to resort to do or resort to doing grid searches and real thick palmetto and things like that. I trust this better, so I do carry that with me. Um, this bag right here, it's got a couple water purification tablets, uh, more CR123 batteries, a couple another pair of double A's. It's got an extra shooting tab in there, a couple little things like that, a whistle if I need it, sharpening rod, nothing major, a couple little accessories if I have to have them, but I like having them out there. Um, so I got those with me there. Um, this rope, just spare rope, just because it comes in handy for whatever. If I decide I don't want to bone an animal in a, in there and I want to drag it out, I can cut a piece of this paracord, wrap it around a stick, wrap it around that pig, drag it out. Actually, you can see it's already cut right here and here. That's because I've done that twice with this rope uh, with two of the pigs that I killed in, in Georgia earlier this year. Just out of pure laziness, wrapped it right around, drug them out. So, um, so it's an option. It's nice to have a little bit of rope. Uh, these, now here's snack sticks. Okay, these are good. They're nice little ones. These, I talked about these when I was in Missouri this year. Okay, I found these in Missouri, these fatties. I'll put links to them below for you. But this is one heck of a sausage. Look at the size difference of this versus these. I mean, this thing is a meal in its own. I mean, it's an absolute, it's a lunch. And uh, the, the, these things are incredible. These, uh, um, these Sweetwood fatties. And uh, I straight up... I, I have tons of these. I buy them by the box and I love them and I will not, they're always in my pack, one of these now. But this is a full blown meal in my pack in one very simple convenient little setup. So I love those. Uh, they go with me now all the time everywhere I go. Um, my kill kit here basically has my Havilon knife in there, a couple extra blades, some rubber gloves, some wet wipes. Real sweet, simple and easy and this just goes right in my pack just like that. Because uh, I'm going to take care of that animal out there. I'm boning that animal in the field most of the time. Unless I get lazy, I want to use a rope and drag. But most of the time, I'm actually boning them out. And when you put zip stuff in Ziploc bags, leave a corner of it open, which I've not done yet. This is a brand new bag. I'm getting all my stuff ready for this next hunt. But then let all that air out of them and squish them down. And when they're squished down, then seal them. They lay nice and flat. Um, but that's my, my simple kill kit. I got, you know, four rubber gloves, two wet wipes. And the Havilon in there, Havilon Prana, um, and two extra blades in there. So that's just everything I need. Game bags work phenomenal for deer, for elk, for everything you're doing with them. But for pigs, I actually prefer pillow cases. This is an extra large pillow case right here. Or a regular large, or I should say king size pillow case. Is what I normally use. Sometimes even the, que uh, the queens will work just fine too. But um, pillow case right there. You can see this one's actually pretty discolored this because I've used this now a bunch of times. What's nice about them is when you use a pillowcase uh, as a game bag like that, uh, you, you know, when you're done, you same with my game bags. When I'm done, I get home, I take them, I put them in a little three gallon bucket with some bleach, stick them in there with some bleach and water, and I wash them. But what's nice about these with a game bag, game bags are stretchy. So they're designed to fill with meat and then put in a frame pack. And that's how I originally was doing it. You watched my other videos. I had a frame pack that I was hauling out in the woods and leaving somewhere in the proximity. So if I killed a pig, I could get that frame pack. After boning out pigs now, I've realized that unless it's an absolute monster, you don't need the frame pack. You're not getting that much meat that it really makes that big of a difference. So using pillowcases makes a, a big difference here. So I can take this size pillowcase that you see right here, it folds down next to nothing. It's a little heavier than game bag, but no big deal. But right there, and I throw that into my pack, and when I kill that pig, I can bone them out. I can put all that meat right inside this game bag, and then just take this, and then I just take it and give it a couple twists like this, set it like that, and I can hold this, and I can take this with all that meat in there, and just throw it right over my shoulder, just like this, right next to my pack, and I can carry it out. If I don't even want to do that, I can just carry it in my hand, at my side like this, and carry it. You're only talking 20, 30 pounds of meat. It's not heavy. It's, you know, it's, it's not heavy at all. So you can carry it and walk the distance out. So I'm not bringing a frame pack anymore. And I'm not using game bags because with a game bag, that game bag stretches. So when it's on your back, the whole thing is stretching and stretching. Or when you're carrying it, it's bouncing and stretching. Using a pillowcase, 
it's solid. There's no movement to it. So you fill that full of meat, put that knot at the top if you want to, hold on to it, you're sweet and easy. So that's the reason I use the pillowcases uh, for the pigs. And they're dirt cheap. When I buy them, I buy them just like this. Get them right at Walmart. Here's how they come. Two pack of pillowcases, right there. Sweet, simple, easy, six bucks. Uh, get them on Amazon, whatever you want to do. Uh, but then they end up like that. And they start out nice and white. I buy the white because I'm going to bleach them. They start out nice and white, but after you've put some animals in them a few times, they kind of just get bleached out like this, but they're they're nice, clean, bleached, and ready to be reused. So, I mean, this has carried deer. These, these two have carried deer and pigs in them multiple times. So, they work just as good as a game bag. Um, and uh, bug spray, mandatory. I told you guys if you watched my Cabela's video that I did some testing last year between 100% DEET 40% DEET. This stuff worked exactly the same. I saw no difference. So this is what I'm using because it's less oily. Doesn't get into my eyes when I sweat. It's just a lot less of a pain. I actually carry it out there with me. This goes in a very back pocket of my pack so it's easy to get to on the side. And I take it with me out there when I'm pig hunting all the time. But that's what I found to work just as good as anything else but yet be a lot easier on you and not be, you know, when you're sweating or raining it's not coming off and dripping in your eyes. So it works really good. Uh, so that's what I'm using for that. My binoculars, I keep them in my hat. That way I don't have to have a binocular case in there. Uh, they're Vortex binoculars. I've done a review on them. They're the 8x32 HD models. These are my pig ones, and I've also did a review on my simple little adjustable setup that I carry them on. So I can adjust this and make them tighter or looser or whatever I want to do. I can see it here. But I can take this and I can shorten them up. If I want them longer, if I want them taller, I want them tighter, I can adjust the whole thing of this simply by moving that around to wherever I want to. So, I mean, if I'm wearing heavier clothes, I can put them down lower. So, but simple, easy binoculars, those are what I'm using. I keep them right in my hat. Love this hat because it is reversible. I like boonie style hats like this, but also when I'm in Georgia, I don't need to wear camouflage or I don't need to wear orange. When I'm in South Carolina on the pig hunts down there, I am required to wear orange. So I can flip that right around like this. If I'm in Georgia and I'm hunting and I don't want to have it on and all of a sudden I see somebody over there small game hunting or something like that or hear a few shots, I can quickly take that, spin it around, and now I am going to keep myself protected from anybody giving me any crap out there or not seeing me. So I like that reversible hat. Um, so that's... I don't remember where I got it, where it came from. They're available. I'll probably try and find you one on Amazon and put a link down, but... Um, I use it as multiple function, and I just stick my my binos right in it, kind of roll them, and then this goes right into my pack that way until I'm ready to hunt, because both of them are going to come out anyway. Um, toilet paper, mandatory, obviously blood trailing and nature calls, things like that. You want toilet paper, and that's almost pretty much everything. Now, I do also carry a saw. Main reason I'm carrying a saw is just because I... I honestly don't know. I've never used it when I'm pig hunting before, so I probably could take that out if I wanted to. And I, pro I but if I take it out, I'll probably need it. But realistically, I don't think I've ever used a saw. Now, clippers. I've had a couple different kinds. I've been testing a few throughout the year, but these are mandatory to have when you're on a pig hunt. Not because you're trying to clip branches and things like that, but everywhere that there's pigs, there's these little vines. Little skinny vines, but you can't, the, if a stick's in your way, you can snap a stick or bend a stick out of your way, but these vines, that come across, and they're, they're like thinner than, than, they're like thread, they're almost like dental floss, but you cannot break them, and you can't move them, and if you try to push through them, they grab onto every bush around here and make a ton of noise. Having this just lets you walk right up, a snip, snip snip and then walk right through without making any sound that's the reason these are there every time i'm in a pig video these are in my back pocket right here i don't even use a sheath no more no nothing they just sit just like that in my back pocket when i need them i just pull them out they're right there cut what i gotta cut and then they go right back into my pocket that's what i like about these ones that lock is right there and so easy to do and because of that guard they don't poke holes in my pocket my other ones were poking a hole in my pocket so um, I'll put a link to these down below for you if you want, but uh, I, I love you got to have some clippers nothing Crazy you're gonna do with them, but they do come in handy for those those stupid little vines that are just they drive you nuts or pickers If you got to get through pickers and you can't get through here and you're jammed up and it's just a, a mess of that You can clip 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 and then it stuff falls in the ground and you got a clear path through there um, So 
that covers that stuff. You notice I don't have a thermosel in here. When I'm pig hunting, I usually don't use it. Now, you get into the April and beyond stuff, I do bring a thermosel. But really, um, this stuff works good enough that through until you get into April, um, I, I don't really need it. Until those temperatures start getting above this, you know, in the, into the 70s and up, I really don't think you need it. Bug spray works good. I do carry a, um, a, a head net. Now, there are, this is a classic style head net that we used on bear hunts and all this kind of stuff. But the problem I found with these is that they're hard to see through because they're gray. Now on mine, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well on here, but I actually used a black Sharpie and darkened this. So if you look at it from this side, okay, right there, that's very hard for me to see out of. Everything is fogged out and horrible. And I did, now if you look here, where I blacken this out right here with a Sharpie marker, it's better, okay? Way better here than it is here. So using that Sharpie marker made a tremendous difference, but it's still not perfect. It's not bad, and you can see that on there where I colored that with a Sharpie marker. Um, it's not bad. They've been good for many years. Uh, I leave it on like this, and it goes right over top of my hat, but when I got to shoot, I can just simply fold that right up on my hat, and then I'm ready to go. But uh, I found this one. Made by Sea to Summit comes in this little pouch so it's easy. Instead of having to fight with this and put it somewhere, I can clamp this right on the inside of my pack. But this one that's in here is all black. Whoa! Good luck. New flash. Light goes off. Why make it gray where you can't see out of it? This one. So if you look at the difference of just my face on a gray side of this, if you're looking at me, okay? You can see that that's, that's a pain. You can almost see the reflection that I have to deal with light-wise. This is near impossible. But it's nice because it keeps the bugs away from you. We wear them bear hunting. We'll put this one on, and I can see through it perfectly. It's like it doesn't even exist. So it's, I, I like this one a lot better. So when I have my hat on, and I'm out there, and those gnats and everything that start absolutely driving me nuts and are bugging me, I can simply put this on, like this and I am good to go. I have zero complications with my vision with this black one. So I'm good and then when I actually see pigs, I could actually shoot in this one without a problem if I wanted to, but I would still probably just flip this up like this and then take my shot is what I would do. But I like having this head net because um, I don't care if you're wearing DEET and I don't care if you're wearing a, a, th a thermosol running. Gnats are a nightmare and they do not care about either one of them. Deet doesn't stop them, Thermocell doesn't stop them, the only thing that stops them is wind. And if you don't have wind, you're going to be miserable. So a head net, in my opinion, is pretty much a mandatory deal. And uh, this one is by far the best head net I've ever found is this one because it is all black and it is big enough to fit over. Very happy with this head net. Again, if I can find that, I will put a link for below for you uh, for that head net. Um, so that one's out of here. That was just there for purposes of that. Orange vest. You're going to need an orange vest on you too, you know, when you're hunting in certain places. But also I recommend having one as well also uh, I, because if you're wearing a pack and you're hunting with a lot of people, you know, a lot of, a lot of small game hunters, you'll see in my videos that I have this usually lashed through the back of my pack. So even from the back side, I have that orange on there. And uh, then if you're going to be dragging a pig out or you're going to be working on them, you can put this in a tree and hang it there. So if you're boning pigs out, you know, whatever the case is, handy. And when I'm blood trailing, when I get to last blood and I lose it, I can hang this in a tree, go till I find blood, and then come back, grab this, move it to that blood spot. Usually I'll take my hat, leave this at spot one, Go until I find new blood, take my hat, hang it there, come back, get this, bring it over there, put my hat back on. So a spare vest comes in very handy, and they don't take up much room. So it's just a nice thing to have. Um, now, as far uh, other the only other thing on here is I always have with me, obviously, but I have my compass. This is my belt. This is my hunting belt. It's very thin. So when I'm wearing a pack with a, you know, like my hunting pack with a hip belt and everything, this very, very thin, light nylon belt doesn't interfere or give me any problems. Uh, so I like it. But my Bradford Guardian, this is that Guardian 3. It's always with me here. Uh, it's my hunting one. stays on my hunting rig, and I bring it with me hunting all the time. I actually carry the same knife, EDC, every day. have the... Uh, 10 or the M390 version right here too. Both of them same exact kind of setups, same kind of sheaths, nothing different. But this one's my dedicated hunting one, and my compass goes with me everywhere. So these rest right in my pocket. They hang off this belt into my pockets, 
And uh, so that, those are with me all the time out there. Um, so that's the pack stuff for pig hunting. Very little stuff, you know, 10 items, nothing major. Lots of room in here for your food and for your, you know, stuff to drink. Very, very simple and easy setup. Um, now, some other things that you're gonna want, waiters. You're probably gonna need waiters. You can buy some cheap, like these Hoyman's. I actually got these for free, they were given to me, but they're like uh, Hodgman McKenzie's or something. I see them at Walmart, yeah, Hodgman. Um, they're oh, way oversized and big. Um, actually, I put a picture of me and these in social, on my social media. It was kind of funny how big on me they are, but they are functional. They do work, and uh, you know they'll get you through some of those crossings or into places you need them. To, you need to get into, so you can use those. Um, something that I found I used already once this year that I really like are these, another Hodgman, but they have these game weights. Okay. Now these are not your you know hand me down last forever kind of waiters. Okay, they're like. 20 bucks, okay? But they look how small that is, very compact. Here's the other pair too, because I got two of them now. Um, but these, so that those waders fit right in this little pouch, way next to nothing. And then I can take these shoes, which I already have tied together, but these are $7 Walmart Air, you know, they're, they're mesh tennis shoes from Walmart that I got for seven bucks and I got them big size. These are size 11s, I wear 10. Um, but I can, these, cause these have got stocking feet on them. I can wear these waders and these shoes to get me through whatever I need to out there uh, for any kind of crossings and stuff. But I can put these, if I need to, I can throw this right in my pack and set those lashes right to my pack. I mean, you're not talking probably, you're probably talking two pounds of weight right here. I mean, you know, I mean, I have handguns that weigh way more than this, you know, semi-auto handguns. I mean, so we're talking not much weight at all. And uh, you're looking at, 20 and you're 25 bucks and you have portable waders and uh, they've been very good for me they did not leak at all not only did i test them here by my wife laughed at me for filling my tub full and sitting in there with these waders to make sure that they wouldn't leak i stayed in there for a half hour worked fantastic but in georgia i had to use these once across a uh, flooded out road and they worked fantastic so um those are another option for waders again i'll put some links down below you will need a cooler, obviously. You're going to be hunting in warmer weather. Give you an example. This is an Igloo 114, 114 can. Okay. Uh, so what do they call that? An ounce is 70, or 70 quart. 70 quart cooler, 114 cans. Something like this. You can fit two to three pigs, depending on the size of the pigs. Boned out. Not quartered. Boned out. Quartered, you can get probably one and a half pigs in here, but if you take the time to bone them out, you can get two to two and a half or even three if you really, pro you know, if they weren't huge. But you could, you know, this will get you through a pig trip for the most part. And if it didn't and you were a little shy, stop at the gas station and buy yourself a little foam one for 10 bucks. But, um, but this is the one that I usually bring this or I got other sizes, but all you need is something about this size um, will do what you need to do to take care of it, but you will have to have a cooler. Uh, and then another item that I think is recommended, if you're hunting public land, some traction boards. These are lifesavers. Okay, if you are you live in the north or the Midwest, you have no idea what southern mud is like. You have no idea whatsoever. You get into the state, you get into the, the Georgia, the South Carolina, the Florida stuff, the sand roads that get flooded up. You have no clue what driving through peanut butter soup is and it's there. Those are a lifesaver. A pull, uh, recovery straps, great, things like that. But self-recovery stuff, important. Those max tracks, they are a lifesaver. They will get you out by yourself out of a lot of problems. So I do highly recommend them. Uh, I love these snake boots. I've done, I've talked about these already too. These are the lacrosse. These are the Alpha Pro snake boots or whatever they are, what do they call them? Uh, they don't even say in here, but I've done reviews on them as well, too. I'll put links to them below. But I love these snake boots. These are absolutely, by far, um, the best snake boots I've ever had, or best best rubber boot, even, really. Because that's the interesting part on here. Is so I like them so much to wear as just a regular rubber boot. See, I, first time I went down and hunted pigs down there was in April. I was afraid of snakes. I had no experience with snakes. My first trip down was in April. So I was going to be covered up in snakes, and so I was kind of nervous about it. Um, no, actually, my first time was in February, and I didn't wear snake boots then. But when I, the next trip down in April, a couple years ago in April, I knew I was going to be dealing with snakes, so I bought these. 
Once I realized that it's, snakes are pretty much non-existent for the most part, I don't see very many of them in January, February. I don't see many of them until you get above 70 degrees. Then they start really coming out. So if you're planning a trip under 70 degrees, you probably don't need these. Once you hit 70 degrees, those snakes are out. And if you don't know what you're looking for, they can be an adventure for you. Um, but, uh, but I like them so much, comfort-wise that I'm, I just wear them now. Could I get by with just wearing regular knee-high rubber boots? Yes. I like these better than my Burleys. They are more comfortable. They are lighter weight. I like them a lot more. Matter of fact, I just bought myself a new pair. So I have my old ones that have got about 100 and something miles out, or you know, 150 miles on them. I just bought myself a brand new pair, so I have them ready for when these wear out. Now a tip, a, a trick for these, a tip to them, get yourself, which I have in them, gel and gel soles okay you know inserts these ones here are about wore out um you know they again many miles on them but these dr shoals inserts are amazing i just pulled that one out of there i am replacing them putting these in there again brand new ones 10 bucks 10 or 11 bucks i don't remember what they were nothing fancy but they are your gel, your uh your gel um inserts they serve two purposes one is they are going to be a lot more comfortable for you. That is important. They're going to be cushy. I don't even take the original inserts out of there. I put these right in on top of them. You cut them yourself. They're one size, and then you cut them. They're real easy. But these are very comfortable. They also get your foot off of the bottom of there. So if your feet do end up sweating or any of that moisture is there, it gives it a chance to get away from your feet and get out of there. Or if you get a soaker and you get soaked in there, when you dump your boot out, and then you get your foot back in, this gives you that level off of the bottom of this with that gel that keeps you out of that water and it actually lets your foot dry pretty good in there pretty quick. So where if you don't have that, your foot soaked for a long time. So these kind of make a, a difference there. So I make a point to use those. I just bought brand new ones before this trip that are going into these boots. Um, I don't know when I'll ever have to use this, this new one, but I have them. Um, I just, I, I wanted to have them so they're ready for when those die. So, um, but incredible boots. And I think that pretty much covers everything. I got my boat back there, which I did a review on that uh, kayak. I got that because when we were down in Georgia, it stayed in the back of the truck the whole time. A lot of rain, filled it up with water in there from the rain, and then it drove home. We drove home, and here it's 18 degrees, so it was frozen solid. So I actually have it thawing out, trying to get you know, so I can get the ice out of it, blow it up, double check everything, because that is going with me too. Uh, there's times where waders, like I was showing you, they aren't going to help you. Sometimes a boat comes in a lot handier. So, but not needed. Again, keep it simple. This just gives you some ideas of some great stuff for pig hunting and what I'm using and why. So, uh, and I guess now that I realized it, looking at it, I'm going to take my saw out of the equation. So I'm not going to bring a saw. It's going to save me a whopping couple ounces. But this is basically it. That's, that's what I'm using for pig hunting, how and why. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.